Hello viewers, how are you? Welcome to my channel Physics with Rhymes. So today we are going to discuss about the first law of thermodynamics by considering the system as well as the surroundings as well as internal energy. So before going to start this topic, those who are new to my channel, please subscribe my channel so that you can receive notifications regarding my channel as well as you can watch my previous videos so that you can clear your concepts and you can achieve your target either it tag me j means or need so let's start this topic after that system system means nothing but it's a region in space in which a large collection of atoms or molecules which can be considered either by real or imaginary boundary is known as system so here when we consider the large number of atoms or molecules uh, by considering a real boundary or imaginary boundary then we consider it as a system it's a system after that uh, surroundings surroundings is nothing but uh, the medium or matter of vacuum that surrounds the system which may participate in the process of exchange of matter or energy or both with the system is known as a surroundings. So when we consider this as system, the space around the system in which heat or energy or both are being transferred. So that matter can be transferred or energy can be transferred or both can be transferred with respect to the space around the system is known as a surroundings. As we observe this system, there are three types of systems. So the first one is a closed system. So here in the case of closed system, we consider a system in which it is being closed on all the sides so that only heat can be exchanged. Nothing but energy can be exchanged by the body in all the sides or any one of this side is represented as a closed system. So here I have considered a system in which it is being exchanged by the system in all the directions. Whereas we can consider a system in which any from any, any one of the side the heat can be exchanged or the energy can be exchanged with the surroundings. Can, it can also be considered as a closed system. Whereas when we consider an open system, open system consists of the system in which heat can be exchanged as well as matter can also be exchanged. Means when we consider some a glass of hot water, water vapor moves in the upward direction as well as heat energy also moves in the upward direction. Then we can represent it as a open system right? because both matter and energy are being exchanged with the surroundings whereas in the case of closed system only energy is being exchanged with the surroundings whereas matter is not exchanged example for closed system is a pressure cooker pressure cooker or we can also consider a system with a movable piston it's also a best example for closed system whereas Come to the case of the third system, which is known as isolated system. Isolated system does not exchange the matter as well as energy. Example for isolated system is a thermoflask. Thermoflask does not exchange the heat, nothing but energy, as well as it does not exchange the matter with the surroundings. That's why we represent that a thermoflask is an isolated system. Take a screenshot, we'll continue. Now we are going to discuss about a mechanical equivalent of a heat. So here when a work has been done by a body, uh, heat is being liberated means the amount of work done is uh, directly proportional to the heat liberated in the case of this mechanical heat so in order to remove this proportionality we can add a constant which is being represented as j which is known as joules function 
whereas uh, then j is equal to w by q so based on that here we can represent that the amount of heat liberated completely depends upon the work done by considering the mechanical equivalent of uh, heat when the value of j is being represented as a 4.2 joule per calorie or we can also represent it as a 4.2 into 10 to the power of 7 uh, per calorie in CJ system. Come to the case, the common actual value is a 4.186. So in the, instead of representing this, we represent it as a 4.2 joule per calorie. So now let us consider a condition based on this uh, mechanical equivalent of it. Let us consider the uh, hailstones are falling from a certain height uh, such that uh, on reaching the ground uh, they melt down completely. Now we have to find out the height where we know that a uh, latent heat of uh, melting or a latent heat of uh, fusion is given as 80 calorie per gram. So based on that, here the body is falling from a height, so we can represent it as MGH and the amount of heat liberated, it can be given as ML is equal to J. After that, M gets cancelled. So here we have G into H equal to J into L. Whereas, H is equal to J L by G. We know that the value of J is 4.2 joule per calorie and the latent heat of fusion is 80 calories and 1 gram equal to 1000 kg by the value of G is 9.8 meter per second. So on simplifying it here we get 33.8 0.3 into 10 to the power of 3 meters. So here based on that we can represent that if the hailstones fall from a distance of 33.3 kilometers. So this represents the condition for mechanical equivalent of heat. Let us consider a body for which we are going to represent the internal energy. Internal energy. Come to the case of this, internal energy is nothing but the sum of all the energies represents the internal energy of the body possessed by the system. So here the internal energy is being represented with U, where U equals the sum of the kinetic energy as well as the sum of the potential energy possessed by the gas molecules is known as internal energy. Whereas, uh, here based on this internal energy, I am going to consider an isolated system based on uh, volume and uh, pressure. After that, uh, the body has started at uh, point A and it has reached to point F. By considering the point B, by considering, so the body has, system has been moved from along the path A, B, F. Whereas uh, the amount of work done in this condition is being represented as Q1 minus uh, W1. Means uh, along the path, the amount of work done is uh, W1. And along the path, the amount of heat transferred is represented as uh, Q1. Similarly, here when we consider the path A to F along the direction C. After that, uh, the amount of heat absorbed by the system e is represented as Q2. And the amount of work done in this condition is represented as a W2. Whereas uh, here when a body system moves along the path ADF. After that the amount of heat transferred in this condition is Q3 and the amount of work done in this condition is W2. As we also this three, Q1, Q2 and Q3 are different completely and W1, W2 and W3 are the different work done in the case of this system. So based on that here we can represent that as the all are different. The difference between these three means Q1 minus W1 and Q2 minus W2 and Q3 minus W3 remains constant. They does not change. So based on that here we can represent that here the change in the internal energy does not depend upon the path whereas it depends upon initial and final position of the system. Initial and final position means it might go along this path, 
or it might move along this path or along this path. Whereas it depends upon the completely on the initial position and the final point, which is known as a cyclic process, and the internal energy remains same in all the three cases. Take a screenshot, we will continue. Now we are going to discuss about the first law for thermodynamics. So come to the case of this. If the heat is capable of doing work, then the heat supplied to the system is equal to sum of increase in the internal energy of the system and external work done by heat. Means here when we consider a system, when we consider a system here when the heat has been supplied to the system heat has been supplied to the system then the amount of heat supplied to the system is equal to the change in internal energy or increase in the internal energy as well as the external work done by the system external work done by the system represents the definition for definition for first law of thermodynamics. So based on this, based on this, here as we answer that the, when the heat is given to the system, then we can represent the change in the heat is represented as a positive. Why? Because here we know that the Q is equal to Q2 minus Q1. Whereas when the heat is being taken away from the system, here dq is represented with a negative sign. Why? Because q1 will be greater than q2. Based on that here, we can represent that when the heat is being taken from the system, we represent the change in the heat with a negative sign. When the heat is given to the system, as you know that q2 will be greater than q1 when the heat is given to the system. Means initial heat will be less than the final heat. Based on that, we can represent that change in the heat will be positive. Whereas, uh, when we consider the increase in the internal energy, when the heat is being supplied, then uh, the change in the internal energy will be positive. Because uh, the kinetic energy as well as potential energy increases. When the heat is being taken away from the system, then the change in the potential internal energy is being represented with a negative sign. Because the energy for the atoms or molecules decreases when the heat is being absorbed. So we represent that uh, the change in the internal energy is uh, negative. Whereas uh, when the work is uh, done by the system, then uh, we know that the work done equals to P into dV. P into dV. Where dV represents a uh, change in the volume. So when the work has been done by the system here, we can represent that the final volume will be greater than the initial volume then the work done will be positive. Whereas, when the work is done on the system by the surroundings, then here we can represent that the initial volume will be greater than final volume. Then the work done in this condition, it will be negative. So, in this way, we represent the positive signs and the negative signs for the first law of thermodynamics. Take a screenshot, we will continue. Let's solve the problem based on first law of thermodynamics. Observe that when one gram of water at 100 degrees Celsius is converted into steam at 100 degrees Celsius and occupies a volume of 1671 cubic centimeter at normal temperature and pressure. Find the increase in the internal energy of the molecules of the system. So here we have to find the increase in the internal energy. So now in order to find the increase in internal energy, let us find out the amount of work done. Well, we know that the amount of work done is given as dW equals to P into dV. Whereas after that the final volume occupied by the molecules is 1671 cm cube. So 1671 into cm cube can be represented in terms of meter as 10 to the power of minus 6 meter cube. Why? Because we know that 1 meter equals to 10 to the power of 2 centimeters. Then 1 centimeter equals to 10 to the power of minus 2 meter. 
when we cube this equation on both sides here we get a 1 cm cube equals to 10 to the power of minus 6 meter cube whereas the initial volume is given as 1 cm cube or we can represent it as a 10 to the power of minus 6 meter cube so we know that the pressure of the gas is 1.013 into 10 to the power of 5 newton per meter square let's substitute these values in this equation Answer that uh, the amount of work done is given as 1.013 into 10 to the power of 5 into 1671 into 10 to the power of minus 6 minus 1 into 10 to the power of uh, minus 6. So here the work done in this condition is 1.013 into 10 to the power of 5 into 1670 into 10 to the power of uh, minus 6. So here on this Multiplication here we get 169.2 joules is the amount of work done by the system in order to convert from water to steam. So here the amount of heat supplied to the system is given as mass into latent heat of vaporization. Whereas mass of the water is 1 gram into latent heat of vaporization is 540 calorie per gram and we know that uh, 1 calorie equals to 4.2 joules so when we multiply it here we get 2268 joules is the amount of heat supplied to the system now based on the first law of thermodynamics we know that the first law of thermodynamics represents that dq equals du plus dw from this that increase in the internal energy equals to Amount of heat supplied minus amount of heat work done by the system. So here as we observe that the amount of heat supplied to the system is 2268 minus 169.2. So when we simplify it here we get a 2098.8 joules. This represents the increase in internal energy. Take a screenshot, we will continue. Now we are going to discuss the different types of process that has been taking place based on the work. Observe that the first one is isothermal process. In isothermal process, uh, the heat will be exchanged between the system as well as the surroundings. Uh, by keeping the temperature constant so by keeping the temperature constant here as the volume of the body increases pressure decreases as the volume of the body decreases the pressure increases that is being represented based on this graph whereas the amount of work done in this condition can be represented as w equals to p into d whereas uh, integration is being represented as uh, V at Vf. So this represents the expression for work done in the case of uh, isothermal process and remember that the temperature remains a uh, constant. Whereas in the case of isobaric process, uh, here pressure remains constant whereas volume changes with respect to temperature. Then the amount of work done in this condition, since the pressure is constant here we can represent it as a uh, Work done equals final volume minus an initial volume. Observe that uh, the volume is changing across the path, whereas uh, the pressure is constant in this condition. That's why we represent the work done as uh, W equals P into final volume minus the initial volume. Whereas uh, when we consider the isochoric process, observe that uh, here, the, here the volume is constant. Whereas uh, the pressure is uh, changing, pressure is uh, changing. So here observe that the final volume and the initial volume is the uh, same. Then the amount of work done in this condition can be represented as P into V minus V, nothing but uh, zero. So in the case of isochoric process, the amount of work done is being uh, represented as zero. Since there is no change in the volume and the process takes place at a uh, pressure varying at constant volume. So here we can represent that the volume remains a constant in this isochoric process. And in isobaric process, pressure remains a constant. 
When I say in the case of antibiotic process, no heat exchange takes place. No heat exchange takes place. Without exchange the heat to, from the system to the surrounding sun, here when we change the volume, then pressure changes along with the temperature. As well as when we change, increase the volume, the pressure changes with respect to the change in the temperature. That is being discussed in the case of a antibiotic process. These are the common four types of process we discuss in this case. Take a screenshot. Please give a like to this video, share this video to your friends and don't forget to subscribe my channel.